Hello everyone, welcome back to Force Science and Kerbal Space Program 2 Early Access, where we now have to decide what to do with this because it landed rather hard and broke into pieces. And yeah, that's not as simple as tweaking numbers like trying to uh, reduce the amount of heat or finding the right altitude, which we've been doing so far. We've got the right altitude, it's 53 kilometers with this, assuming the same parachute and mass and the heat shields as we have them, but we now have to figure out how to land safely. And that might vary based on what kind of terrain we land on. So one suggestion was to adjust the suspension. I did have it on auto suspension because we weren't getting to that part yet. Um, so damper strength up and spring strength down. Was that the order it goes in? You know, I, I don't do ground very well. Okay, hopefully that symmetrized to everything else. Seems that way. All right, the wallabies are there. Uh, someone, uh, someone suggested ejecting them separately, but we've already got them on these boosters, so we'll separate them off with the boosters instead of trying to have an extra decoupler, which would be extra mass anyway. And I don't think I'm gonna heat shield them separately. Uh, what we're gonna try to do is land in a good location this time instead of tilting over, and also we want to make sure that the boosters don't fall off. Uh, so right now we have one strut per booster, I think. I think we are going to up that to two struts per booster. Yes. <laughs> that might help. I mean, might or it might not. Okay, not a billion struts per booster. Let's see. Six is right. Yeah, I don't know if that's going to be good. The functionality of struts is questionable, but... Anyway, I think we'll we'll move the dro drogue chutes down to these nose cones instead of up there. And we need to put main chutes up there because this probably has to come straight back. Though I got a comment saying that the Kerbals don't even have to land on Eve. I'm going to pretend I didn't see that. <laughs> uh, so I, I think, I don't know. Uh, with engines, it's a bad idea to do this kind of symmetry. Um, I don't know how bad it is with these drogue chutes. I think, let's try and see, six will just have one on each, so maybe I'll, four on each will give us the same number of drogue shoots, so maybe we shouldn't change things too much, but if we add mass to the situation, we might want to. So up here, which we will carry for longer, we'll have main shoots. And I don't think we need more than eight. And that's for Earth entry, but we'll use them for the Eve entry as well. So that gives us marginally more parachutes, but maybe we should have even more than that. Let's see. How small can I make the heat shield for this forward return? In other words, can I make the heat shield just like that? That's probably too dangerous, isn't it? We probably need the XL heat shield on this, but then it's going to stick out unless we change this as well. What's the mass of this part? Seven tons, so we don't even need eight, probably. Each of these can handle about 1.5 tons, so this is probably overkill for the parachutes, but we could use the extra for EVE anyway. Hopefully the cargo bay... The, the nose cones tend to want to overheat though, so we have to worry about that if we try to put this on. I guess that doesn't look too bad. It, it worries me a bit, that's for sure. Now, Kerbin entry doesn't take all the ablator, so I'm just gonna leave off most of it. But maybe we don't even need to worry about that, and we could transfer them to another vessel. In which case, I mean, I, I wonder if I should test that first. But yeah, we would be getting them out of the hatch in that case. We wouldn't dock to this. I don't want to change too many things. Uh, I want to see if the extra struts and the suspension will work. We've already changed quite a lot of things here. You know what though, maybe I should add some extra parachutes down here. We clearly didn't slow down to enough of a low speed. I really don't want to use the engines to slow down. So maybe I'll add more of these chutes to this side. 
to each booster. Okay, we used to have 42 shoots, now we have 98 shoots, double the shoots. So that's um, the ones down here plus 8 up there, so... Okay, so that's good, right? <laughs> uh, we'll see. Seems like a lot of extra mass. But uh, they're not that heavy. They're 0.1 tons apiece, and this assembly... Well, this part that's landing is nearly 900 tons, so it'll be alright. Okay. Once again, we'll cheat it over there and see. Uh, as usual, the, whenever I start the game, the first time that I get it out to the launch pad, it does stuff like this. And the fact that it let loose those boosters, the ones that we're trying to reinforce with extra struts, makes me sad, of course. Makes me very, very sad. <laughs> um, I don't know if the unbreakable joints or whatever rigid attachment option they have in the menu should be activated now. I mean, they sort of have an auto-strutting feature that's automatically done these days. So I don't know if that's necessary. See, I, I just revert to launch and then it's stable-ish. Stable-ish. But, yeah. Okay, so, back to Eve. And for our usual 700,000 apoapsis. And we'll definitely be aiming for that when we arrive. So this stage is going to have to try to get us there. Alright, well, release the coupler. Teleport. I wonder if that heat shield that we have up there will lose its ablator. while we're coming down through Eve's atmosphere, like, prematurely ablate. Does it deplete the ablator on everything at once, is the question. Because it lumps all the ablator together, right? When we uh, right-click on them, instead of giving us the ablator on each one, it gives us the ablator on all of them combined. Right, that's why we're short some, because I reduced the ablator on that top one. On the other hand, the the heat shields are separated in the resource manager, which apparently lets us move a blader from one heat shield to another. <laughs> so they have 3.2 tons apiece here, and we can actually move the ablator, which we shouldn't be able to do. I hope they've built in a way to make certain resources not movable. Seems vaguely important. I mean, I assume I don't think solid fuel is movable, right? One hopes. We are going to assume nothing has changed, and therefore, 53 kilometers is the ideal altitude for us. But as one comment noted. It can be sort of random. Where we end up is definitely going to be a toss-up. Though, we are starting in the exact same orbit because I cheated us here. There is that. Okay, well, that's close enough. Again, we're getting into this sort of orbit because that's what the stage will likely run out of propellant at. That's why we've got the apoapsis at 7,000. Because in our previous testing, the best that could do was about this. Although we've added mass up here, so now things can have changed. And maybe that stage can't do it quite as well. We might need more boosters, you know. But we'll see. We will get to that. That will require an ac actual launch to figure out. Okay, 65 kilometers, we're in the thick of it again. Oh. There's an overheating indicator on the... the heat shield, I guess. No, the, the coupler behind the heat shield, I think that is. And persistent overheating on the core tank. 
but we're getting to 53 kilometers here. Well, uh, periapsis is now 52. Once again, we should be coming straight down. No second pass. The bit where the stuff behind the heat shields gets overheated though, I'm not pleased by that. Just gotta say. Uh, we are going up right now. Okay, cool down, core tank. This is a little bit too close for comfort, really. Now let's take a look at resource manager to see what's happening with the top heat shield. Okay, the top heat shield is not getting depleted at all. So we gotta keep that in mind when we look at this number for you later here, that 1.28 is not being used. But I don't think we're gonna have trouble with the later. Last time also we didn't. This is a little bit too close on the core tank's heating. And I wonder whether I should put at least one inflatable heat shield behind this. But then that might just blow up. I mean, so... What can we do? These are the largest ablative heat shields that we have. I don't know how to protect the core tank any better. And besides that, do you think that the outside... Well, the outside tanks are smaller. The core tank is actually a larger tank, so that's a problem. Sort of like the situation we had up here and why I didn't put the large heat shield and said put the extra large. We could come in at a little bit higher than 53 and probably still make it. It hangs out above 50 kilometers for quite a while, which is good. Okay, well as we slow down, it sort of wiggles a lot more. 40 kilometers, we've still got uh, well, we'll say 2.5 tons of surplus of later here. This time, if I think that the touchdown situation is bad, maybe we'll just try to get to orbit again and see how that works out. I want to see whether we have too much delta V for orbit. So maybe we'll do that as a test. Or not enough delta V for orbit too. Oh, so that heat shield sticking out could give us extra drag that we don't want. Stuff is still ablating, darn it. We're only at 500 meters per second. Oh, so this time we have all six landing legs. So there's some of the randomness for you. We're definitely not carrying too much ablator. I think that's close enough. We don't need to worry about that. Electric charge is a little bit light. The reaction wheels outstrip what our RTGs can provide. Well, especially the big reaction wheel here. And it is a large reaction wheel, not an extra large. There seems to be some water over here, but not where we are. I think. Or... Well, yeah. I think we're on the shore, and that's water right there. Or whatever liquid. Whatever liquid Eve has, but we'll have to get closer to see. Interestingly blue sky. Hmm. I think we've already lost the drogue shoots. Now for the actual mission with the Kerbals, if it looks like we're landing on bad terrain, I'm just going to revert at that point. Uh, and, well, to uh, save. Because, let's face it, I can't figure out where the heck we're going to end up. So... We're just gonna have to accept that. Uh, this should be the main parachutes deploying. It's showing the drogue chutes red there. But I think I staged the main chutes and they're taking a long time because there's 98 of them. Releasing 98 parachutes may or may not crash the game. Let's find out. Maybe I shouldn't release them all at the same time. Oh, okay. Ah, camera changed. Okay, they're out. Very blue down there. I can't see what's there now. We used to be able to see little glimpses, but the cloud is making things mysterious. 
Okay. Some glimpses. We have terrain. Maybe mostly flat, because the water's right there. Okay, parachute deployment. Oh, why does, do those overheat when the parachutes deploy? What is even going on up there? Okay, releasing the heat shields. Okay, and landing gear down. I don't know if having double the parachutes has really improved our situation very much. 12 meters per second? I don't think we were that fast with half of the parachutes. The landing gear doesn't really stick too much lower than the nozzles of the engines, mind you. I really don't want to use the engines on touchdown, but we definitely seem to need to. The heat shields are exploding down there. I'm gonna save here. Why are those overheating so much more now? I don't think we'll be staying on the surface very long like that. I mean, I guess it's really hot on the surface of EVE. I mean, Venus-like. Something's breaking. Or the parachutes are going off, I don't know. Long pause. Please, let it just be the parachutes going away. Please, let the parachutes just go away. Gosh, this is taking a while. Really wants to keep me in suspense, huh? It's probably bad. Then again, the parachute deployment was about as long. It's still paused. Okay, well, uh, I don't know how long I'm gonna have to wait for this. <laughs> it's it's still still waiting to tell me what happened. Hmm. Okay, well. I think the game has in fact crashed. I can't imagine it's gonna take this long. So, we're going to try it from the save I made in Eve's Atmosphere after entry and we're going to see whether that actually functions or not, but I think I've waited long enough and I don't think it's gonna tell me the result right now. That's cheating, Kerbal. That's cheating. Alright, what kind of state are we in with this save? I'll give it one more try for touchdown and then we're going to test how it does on getting back to orbit. Uh, okay, get all those parts in please. We need all of those. Alright, um, I guess the parachute should be out. Okay, the parachute should be out and they're having an effect here, but we can't see them. So keep that in mind, the parachutes are out. <laughs> okay. And if I throttle up, the engines aren't activated, so let's activate those. Ugh. Okay, I'm convinced. I guess not having to render the parachutes probably gives us better frame rate. <laughs> oh, too early. Oh, okay, I did that badly, I admit. Oh. Okay, we're in the pause. Oh, we've passed the pause. Give me an extra fl frame. Give me an extra frame there. 
Uh, it's still deciding. What if, what if we can't do the EVE mission because it can't decide whether to blow me up or not? <laughs> uh, maybe I should shift the landing gear further down. They'll get hotter though. Potentially. I basically wanted it to be stable on the engine bells, on the nozzles. But yeah, we're we're not getting much luck on that. I think it's definitely crashed again. The game, not the Oh wait. I'll take it back. It gave me one more frame. <laughs> uh come on. You can do it. Gosh darn it, I wish it used more of my CPU. It's using ten percent only right now. It's sad. Using only 22% of my GPU, by the way. The memory of my GPU is using all of it. It squeaks every now and again. <laughs> okay, well, I'm convinced it's not completely crashed, but I don't think we can go with one frame every minute or so. Okay, I haven't gotten a new frame in a long time now. Oh, 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 give me another frame. I waited like two minutes. Oh. Oh. <laughs> this is, uh... Oh. Oh. I am... probably, to my own demise, a very patient person. Oh, 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 we've got more frames. And it's, it's alive. It's alive. But I don't know if I can wait that. And one of the landing gear blew up somehow. I don't know when that happened. Um, there's the flight report. Uh, it says that three times, but only one. Oh, I think this one's bent. Yeah, so three of them are actually off right now. Uh oh, um, no, um, okay, that one fell. Okay, I think we should go up now. Um, go. Okay, retract the air brakes. Go. Okay, trying to make orbit now. Okay, you know what? 315 isn't that bad, but maybe I, I should go east. Let's just go east. Pretty good power right now. The boosters feed into the core engines, which are down here. Now I think I shouldn't have turned it all, really. This is my first time trying to ascend in the five atmosphere atmosphere. Uh oh. I should have saved on the ground. Gosh darn. Okay, just go straight up. Just go straight up. It never does that very well, though. Okay, maybe it's doing okay now. Alright. Uh, okay, maybe not. I believe in you, Rocket! I believe in you! Okay, let's make sure what happens next is right. It is. What's that? That's okay. That's not. That's the heat shield. Uh, I mean, that's prior to Earth entry heat shield. Uh, okay. We'll just go straight up with the boosters. We're past the clouds. The triumphant view. Okay, boosters off. Triumphant view of this ascending. Ok, 
okay. Oh, 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 oh. Our air dynamics are bad. No. Oh, no. We need fins on this part then. Oh, gosh. That's not gonna help. That's not gonna help. I see a flaw. <laughs> Oh, please go up, please go up. I still got Delta V. If we can just go straight up, it's okay. Okay, we, we just need to go straight up, no SAS. Straight up, straight up, straight up. And maybe small fins down here would be a good idea. I probably want a docking port on here so we can refuel this stage. Because we're probably gonna expend it trying to get to orbit around Eve. Oh no, the tuba's too slow to extend. Uh, oh, and we've all ripped apart. Still go up, still go up. Okay, we need to stop this whole business of it rolling around all over the place every time we decouple. This is not high enough for the tuba to be happy. We're going down. <laughs> uh, we're, yeah, we need to be higher up for the tuba to have enough power to control us. There goes the stage. It has really ba bad ISP here and it's going down. So, yeah. Let's uh, load the game again from before we touch down and bear through how long it takes for it to decide whether to explode us or not. It ultimately got rid of three landing gear. Now I don't know how valid that result is because we're loading a save in the atmosphere and who knows what that even does so okay we've activated the engines we could have more landing gear but of course that's more mass Okay, now we wait. <laughs> uh, now we wait. It hopefully will only get rid of landing gear, but it could get rid of more things. I don't know. Oh, oh, oh. It's been four minutes. A little bit over four minutes since I got a frame, and, and then it suddenly made a sound. Don't worry, I'll, I'll obviously cut out the four minutes for you. Uh... I believe in you, Rocket, but I think we do need to make some fixes so that I can ascend properly, and it might not have enough Delta V, as it turns out. We'll see. Relying on the tuba on the upper stage might be a mistake. Especially since it takes extra time for it to start. The additional pressure because of the heat shield here is probably throwing our aerodynamics off. Now if I put fins down there, would they survive? Do I have to use heavy fins? I don't know. And again, the air brakes are only 1800 Kelvin. But then again, I think to get to 1800 you need the heavy fins. Oh! I heard a squeak. It's been 10 minutes since touchdown. <laughs> More than 10 minutes. Okay, we have all the frames now. What do we lose? Oh, F3 doesn't work like that. Um, one of the landing gear has broken. Let me just retract the, the air brakes right now. And we want to point up. No. Okay, it can't do up when it's landed. A little bit inconvenient, but okay. Alright, let me save. <laughs> uh, 
Okay, we're gonna try and go up again. Straight up, landing gear in. Oh, we it took takes out a few en well one engine over there. We lost one engine. Well, um, below us is pure blue, and above us, pure purple and pink and the sun. Well, the sun is making the pink. Okay, uh, okay. I think we're getting past the clouds now. All right, but we're running out of the boosters. Okay, keep going up, keep going up. Okay, we're staging. Oh, that, oh, because we lost one engine. Oh, gosh. Because we lost one engine on that, that one was still firing. It still had fuel in. No. Such fail. <laughs> I will try, but this is not going to work very well. Command chairs? We should put them in command chairs. Uh, I don't think we're getting high enough for the tuba. And it's not letting me put the tuba stage in the right place. Uh oh. Okay, just in time. Okay, tuba. No, tuba extension takes too long. But, yeah, it's hopeless. Okay, alright, alright. We have more fixes to do. We can sort of land, but it's really, really... It takes a long time for it to decide whether to kill us or not. Like, 12 minutes. So, that's rough. <laughs> And I guess mainly it's because of the landing gear that's trying to decide whether to kill us or not. But yeah, this this is taking a bit. This is taking a bit. Progress, I guess. But the problems associated with the progress are getting more and more difficult to solve. <laughs> so this one, this this situation is a bigger pickle than we've had so far. Hmm. Well, I'll have to take a look at the design to see what we can do about it. The tuba is definitely not the answer. We're also somewhat lacking in Delta V, I feel. Um, rather than having too much, I think we have too little. So that's a bit of a problem to get back to orbit around Eve, I mean. Yeah, uh, it might be that that heat shield sticking out is too much. We... We should use an inflatable heat shield there. Why am I not using an inflatable heat shield there? Okay, so we'll use an inflatable heat shield there. I don't know how well inflatable heat shields do coming back into Kerbin. I've never tried that before. But hopefully the sheer size of it compared to the thing that's trying to slow down will be a little bit better. And that will prevent it from causing aerodynamic issues on the way up. But I don't know if that's the only problem. Like, it's is it causing too much drag on the way up and that's why we can't get to high enough so that the tuba can de deploy? That's a good question. We have a whole lot of other things causing drag along the way up too. So we'll think about that. But for now, I'll leave it here. We have made progress, but it's still a long road. With that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.